is so freaking bad. Wrestle me. Welcome, everybody, to Juice Pro Wrestling Podcast, episode 179, Holiday Horror. Holiday Horror with our very special guest, the man behind the cryptic closet, Vinny Malavra. Vinny, how the fuck are you doing tonight, brother? Doing fucking fantastic. How can I not be after that kind of an introduction? That's probably the most epic way I've ever heard my last name pronounced. So <laughs> I applaud you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I applaud you because you're doing something very special this holiday season, man. Um, yeah, I'm deep frying a turkey. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Now you're speaking that my language. Don't explode. <laughs> Giggity, right. giggity, giggity. So you, I take you know what you're doing. There's no explosions there, right? Um, you guys have teamed up with Shudder's very own last drive in, the influential horror host, the one that I grew up on as a kid, the one, the only Joe Bob Briggs. You guys are teaming up to present a double feature December 16th at the Music Box Theater in Chicago. And this is going to be. Uh, in 35 millimeter for the first time in theaters that I'm aware of. I own this on DVD, but you got Santa Slay, which is Ooh. a great Bill Goldberg film. Probably the only film that I'm aware of other than like the longest yard that's worth a damn, but a uh, great film nonetheless. And Silent Night, Deadly Night, which is a classic Christmas horror movie. How the fuck did all that come about, man? Um, First, I'm pretty sure Goldberg is also in a universal soldier movie oh yeah yes he is i, I didn't dig it though yeah. good call <laughs> but it all came about um a few years back i was doing an event kind of like a little mini pop-up event in chicago called uh the horror house and julio guerra of gorilla publishing and tales from the cryptic closet he's uh my my brother from another mother and he's with me the whole entire time um him and my brother and we kind of put this whole event together. And during that whole event, um, to be completely honest with you, I was feeling very sporadic. And um, with that event specifically, it was something that I kind of just dove into. Um, and one of my ideas was to have Joe Bob send in some last drive in promo merch so I could pass out at the event. Um, long story short, it wasn't able to work out, but he did send two signed posters. Um, that communication kind of sparked the idea in my head. How cool would it be to see Joe Bob do a live double feature? Because I had just seen him um, when he was at Music Box before that. And he did kind of like a, a thing called um, How Rednecks Save Hollywood. And it was more of like a PowerPoint presentation, but with a Joe Bob twist. Um, again, it was awesome. I loved it. But as a fan, if you're a fan of Monster Vision, Last Drive, and just that style of presentation... In my head, I was like, it would be really cool to kind of see that. So um, long story short, I contacted Music Box Theater and pitched the idea. And right away, Ryan, um, who's been a huge help throughout this whole thing, shout out to Ryan. Um, he was like, let's do it. Would you be open to co-presenting with us? Because we knew we wanted to bring him back. We just didn't know what exactly we wanted to do. You know, and he's like, it sounds like you you kind of know what you want to do. I'll give you a little bit of spoiler. Only my like my close friends know this, but the original idea was to have Joe Bob and Sven Gulli together for the Ooh, first time. Go for that one, two, and oh. yeah. So uh, it was the idea was to have them together, but because of management and because you know he's with WCIU and all the all the legalities, like everything has to be very family friendly. And if you know Joe Bob, I mean, he gives a breast count for every film. So it's like so many different foos at one time. Right, right. right. And the thing is, in my head, as I'm booking this as the fan, it's like, do you go with doing something family friendly, just to have Sven Gulli on there, which would be really awesome? Or, I mean, in, in return, when you do that, you're kind of watering down the Joe Bob experience because he kind of has to keep everything a lot more tame. Right. Um, and yeah. We ended up figuring it all out. Joe Bob personally requested Santa Slay and uh, Silent Night, Deadly Night. 
and Ryan somehow I don't know how the fuck ha- how it happened if he uh what kind of shit he pulled but he managed to get the 35 millimeter of Santa Slay which is the first time it's gonna be played since 2005 which is pretty insane. Wow. Did that come out in the theaters? I don't remember. I just remember finding it like later, probably like a year later or something on DVD. Mm-hmm. It probably hit select theaters. Like, you know how some horror movies have small openings, like The Void was played like maybe in one or two theaters or there's very niche like theaters who, who play them. Um, I think there were those kind of openings. It wasn't anything big because back then I was a huge fucking Goldberg mark and just wrestling mark in general. I feel like we would have all, you know, been to the theater to go see him dress as Santa. Yeah, dude. And it's a great movie. And that's kind of like a good segue here because I wanted to uh, shine a little light on each of these films for everybody watching and listening right now. Um, and we'll start with Santa Slay, 2005. Uh, what more can you say than Goldberg as Santa Claus? And, <laughs> and it just, dude, from the get go, it's almost like Punisher Warzone. It fucking opens up and just punches you right in the fucking throat, dude. Just mayhem, murder. All these celebrities, like they, they had all these top notch names for the time in the flick, and they all die like within five minutes. You know, I mean, budget, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. Possibly. Cameo budget. <laughs> right. Well, I'll, I'll never forget the nanny, Fran Dress. She's like, Santa? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Julie, Santa does exist. <laughs> or whatever You're next. Her name is. <laughs> right. <laughs> Dude, but it's, it's so brutal, man. Uh, and, I, every year, dude, like I said, I have it on DVD. It makes the rounds, and uh, I'll watch it you know, year-round, but especially around the holidays because it's it's just so well done. Uh, I like the comedy in it. Um, the brutality is good, and surprisingly, I mean, it's Goldberg, dude, fucking doing what Goldberg and, does best, you know? It's just not ripping all, motherfuckers not, apart. Not all great horror movies are great, if that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like fucking True. Killer Clown space i love that movie it is not but we show that to somebody who doesn't get it they'll be like what is this like a joke are you, are you really, you know what I mean? but to you you're like listen dude all the imperfections are what make this movie you know what i mean um so i mean santa slay is one of those movies where as a kid i was super excited to bring it home running it from blockbuster and seeing goldberg on the cover and being like holy shit i can't believe goldberg's in a movie let alone a horror movie you know so right um yeah it's kind of it's, it's kind of crazy to see a moment like when I think about that as a kid and being so excited at, at a blockbuster with that in my hand to, I don't know, almost 30 years later and helping host uh, or helping present a double feature with Joe Bob showing that movie, you know? Fucking insane. Like I said, great flick. And then transition into your next flick, Silent Night, Deadly Night. I, dude, a Christmas horror classic that spawned, I don't know, like four or five sequels. And I think they tried to do some kind of loose uh, remake what, a few years back, just yeah, called yeah. Silent Night. Never saw that one. It but, wasn't uh, horrible. Those were some good kills. Um, wasn't wasn't anywhere as good. Listen, um, quality-wise, to, to the to the normal eye, they'd be like, yeah, it's it's, it's actually a better-looking film. But to us horror fans, you're going to choose that <laughs> one, like the original. Dude, of course. My horror heart lives and dies in the fucking eighties and early nineties, man. Like, oh yeah, dude. I mean, listen. I cheap plug. Fucking, um, we just announced. So the cryptic closet. It's me and my brother. I do all the artwork. Um, he's he he helps. We do. He does the shows with me. Helps with the financial stuff and the the legal stuff. But I've been working with one of my really good friends, Stephen Laurels Holiday. He's a really awesome horror artist. Um, if you go on his website. You might see some of his stuff is pretty familiar. It's a, um, we're coming out with the shirt design, which holds near and dear to my heart because I'm into the late 90s, early 2000 movies. But um, we're coming out with a really rad shirt of the faculty on Friday. Yeah, I've seen that. Ooh, yes. That movie is love one that of movie. Where you watch it and you're like, holy shit, there's so many great actors in this. Like, how the fuck? John Stewart ushers there for like three minutes. Um, yeah, right. Who d- who did the faculty too? I'm trying to remember. It's a big horror name. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, there that's right. Go. One of Stratton's babes. Yeah, I do like him. Yep. <laughs> do and you guys kind of you did a little twist on that too. It's kind of got a little reanimator feel to it. it. Does it has um instead of Herbert West, you got Josh Hartnett there with the <laughs> infamous pen saying "Guaranteed to jack you up." So <laughs> two, great, two awesome movies. 
um, that I know a lot of people love. And I feel like the faculty doesn't get a lot of love, doesn't get enough love. Um, it's almost like a forgotten gem. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited to, to finally release that one. Hell yeah, dude. And, uh, going back to a silent night, deadly night, man, I just, uh, I had to get a refresher cause it's been probably 15, 20 years since I've watched that damn movie. Like I said, it spawned sequels that, uh, I think Bill Mosley was in <clears throat> the second or third one. Um, the real fucking weird movie, dude. It's <laughs> when I watched the, uh, the Blu-ray edition and it has like all the cut scenes added into the film so you can tell like some parts are really like, grainy weird looking it's yeah, like all right they really badly edited yeah 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 <laughs> just throw it in dude there. it's just a fucked okay. up story a kid watching his uh parents get murdered in, you know by santa claus on the side of the road he grows up in an <laughs> orphanage and he's so tweaked by this you know traumatized by uh that situation that he grows up he ends up working for this toy store during the holidays and has to play Santa <laughs> yep. and he just flips his shit and starts murdering everybody. <laughs> Dude, it's great. Tons of awesome boobage and, uh, you know, some, some really good kill boobage. scenes. And it also, I might add has one of my favorite female scream Queens of all time of all time, brother. And that's, um, the lovely, the vivacious from return of the living dead, Leanna Quigley. Yes. She's still it's fucking funny. mounted on a, I think it's a deer <laughs> antler or some shit. I think you're right. Yeah, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm, uh, I purposely usually, I would have watched both movies by now, but I kind of want to, um, I hope, I hope this doesn't make me look bad. I want to get really stoned and just hang out at the theater when the event's happening and you could do that because it's Illinois, brother. What did yeah. you say? <laughs> yeah. I mean, when I say stone, I mean like order a tombstone pizza and just eat it in one sitting. That's, what I, go. That's what I thought oh, yeah. you meant. He wants to kick it with RVD. There ain't nothing wrong with that. I, I've actually smoked with RVD before. It's a benefit. Oh smoke. my God, I'm jealous. I've gotten to smoke pot with, I've gotten to smoke with, what was it? RVD, Sabu. Nice. Gibson. And Matt Riddle. What was that third name? Did you say oh, Mel Gibson? Nice. <laughs> I wish. Robert Gibson. Oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was Rock and Roll Express. Hell yeah. Pro Wrestling Tees anniversary party. And my boss thought, like, fuck it. Uh, Ricky, uh, Robert Gibson was in town. Let's invite him to come hang for the work party. So he literally came out to Emporium, this arcade bar out here, and played yeah. pool. And, um, dude, he is almost better at pool than he is at wrestling. Really? <laughs> Fucking doing like trick shots and shit. I mean, very impressive. I have, I have a clip on my phone. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, yeah. I, I was, I was stunned. Getting hustled by <laughs> fuck. I want the rock and roll express. I, I didn't think it was real life. I'm like, I want from <laughs> the wrestling fan. All of a sudden I'm at a work party and Robert Gibson's hitting a trick shot at a fucking arcade bar. I'm like, what kind of weird Not only known for the hot tag, but the guy can make a hit a mass A shot like nobody's business. <laughs> Dude, I will send you the video. I have to look, but I will. That's send, awesome. I'll send Justin the fucking video. And yes. We'll see. Um, and what's the best part is that I cut it off at the weirdest time because it's right as he's about to scream out of excitement. So <laughs> if he pauses it at the right moment, it's kind of scary. This is worth some money. <laughs> Dude, I love that, man. That's awesome. That's, I mean, I'm sure, too, because, you know, you also work for Pro Wrestling Tees. I mean, you've had a, a lot of killer experiences with a lot of talent coming in and out through the store. What's uh, what's another, like, killer story that you have of meeting some of these guys? Um, Honestly, man, it's there's just so many random ones. I mean, like ones that stick out, of, like, personally for you, you know? Um, Definitely the times that that punk came to the store um i was a huge cm punk fan still am um super grateful that he's back in wrestling i don't care what what he's doing who he's wrestling um if they're up and coming or if they're fucking main eventers like i'm just grateful that the guy's back i'm tired of living in a generation where everybody kind of bitches and moans and complains of you know and tries to fantasy book things mm -hmm. um but when he came to the shop he was so cool and so like down to earth and we had met a few times because I had worked his booth at C2E2 and um, 
we were talking that was before he released the what was the movie was it the girl on the third floor yeah that yeah yeah or yeah was that or there was another movie he was doing where i forgot the name but he 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 showed me on his phone a clip of his dog um dead in the dryer and it was like a fake dog in the dryer <laughs> it wasn't larry everybody it wasn't larry was, no but like halfway through watching the video i'm like i'm sitting right now watching a video that uh same punk took on a cell phone it, it all just kind of clicked and i'm like man I, I love working where i work you know like, there's not many places where you can go um because the cool thing is that the wrestlers respect everything that the store does and i know that they appreciate it. a lot of the wrestlers show their gratitude and their appreciation and always say you know like thank you guys for doing what you're doing for you know all the hard work that you put in all the hours because i mean ryan does post videos where you see the guys in the back working till super late or you know just busting their ass because i mean the guys in the back that print the guys that pre-treat i mean they they deserve all the credit in the world because during this black friday sale and all these big sales that these fans look forward to every single year like everybody at at work gears up to work super late sometimes it works till 2 a.m and it's all to bring wrestling fans their merch and make them happy and um yeah it's just it's just a really it's a very unique world. I'm 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 blessed to be where I'm at and work for Ryan Barkin and uh, be a part of Pro Wrestling Tees for sure. Fuck yeah, dude! I, and Julio's been a guest of the show a couple times now, dude, and he he's preached the same thing. Like, great work environment. You know, the culture there is fucking awesome. And like you said, just the dedication that you love going to work and putting your ass through the ringer and having a good time doing it. I might add, but just you know, working fucking hard. To spread the love, spread the joy. You know, you can buy a uh, Juice Pro Wrestling merch at Pro Wrestling Tees as well. <laughs> but, you know, for anybody that wants to get some shit done, you know, pro wrestlers, all this stuff, and, and spreading the joy of AEW or any individual talent that is on your guys' roster, you know, it's it's amazing, dude. And I thank you as a fan and everybody working at the, at the shop that are putting that is putting those hours in because, dude, we love the product. And we love being it. Like, imagine us having something like this is like, you know, I don't know how old you are, but I'll date myself. I'm 39. If I would have had this shit when I was a, a kid, been insane, dude. Like, that's all I would have got for like birthdays and Christmas. Like, hey, give me like two, three hundred dollars worth of T-shirts, you know, oh, yeah. all these X-Men you know. figures. I hey, Grandma. Wrestling shirts were harder to come by. You're the one to do like a. You'll go to a mall that has a store that has like knockoff wrestling shirts that aren't your license, but they're not like fully WWE. So you're like, I've never seen this shirt, but it has like five wrestlers. that are like, fuck it. Um, or you go to a live event if you're not ordering it off the website, you know? Um, mm -hmm. So pro wrestling tees, it's just like, it's, it's really cool. It's super unique. Um, and I've been super lucky and fortunate to meet some really awesome people. Um, wrestlers people who work behind the scenes all that um perfect example um danhausen was a guy who, who i went from uploading his shirt designs and always being like oh man this guy i noticed the horror inspiration in a lot of his designs so i was intrigued which led me to look him up on youtube and um fell in love with the character as as Kind of watch his career grow from just t-shirt submissions like i would watch videos but i could tell really hitting because you'd start seeing a lot more he'd start releasing stuff more and more you could tell there was like fan art that he'd be submitting and um now you fast forward to now this guy's like probably one of the most over guys who aren't signed um and as far as like gimmicks go like he he sticks with it man we were on the jericho cruise this dude's dress in like a fucking sailor outfit short shorts and a super colorful button up <laughs> um the tales from the crypto closet 3d he's doing the forward and um and all from our i guess interaction you know on pro and and now you know he's a super cool dude um and yeah i, I talk to him pretty often whenever he's him with the uh, killer cross which i'm glad to be able to say i can call him killer cross again and not carry it across welcome yes. back exactly huge danzig fan of mine Dude, he, he's that's that's the one guy that I will praise from beginning to end. Um, not only is he one of the most badass dudes in the ring and has when he's not put 
in some weird game. Like, he is one of the best. Like the promos that he puts himself, like puts together himself that he posts on his YouTube, they're phenomenal. I'm like, phenomenal. why don't you just let this guy be him? Like this guy has so many talents. Like he was he was hand into the WWE with the fucking bow on top. And then you have Scarlet, and it's like you couldn't find something for them. <laughs> like you couldn't find a little bigger. Like literally everything they did in NXT worked. And then they fucked it all up, brought it to WWE, and then they were, they were confused as to why he wasn't getting over. It, it leaves me baffled, but I'm kind of selfish and kind of happy that it, it happened that way because mm-hmm. for Killer Cross, and secondly, now I'm a little bit more hands on on his shirt designs. Like I, I designed 80% of his merch wow. um, before he That's got awesome. to NXT. Yeah, put him, yeah, in an old, put him in an oversized demolition mask. Like the, he's gonna get a paycheck the next again. Hell yeah, he's I'm happy. Praying, <laughs> I'm, I'm, pra- I'm literally fingers crossed. I don't know, I don't know anything. Even though I work for pro wrestling teams, it may seem like I might know more. Listen, I don't know shit, but I will tell you this: you, you have to call Julio and double check on me. The moment Kevin Seen shows up on like AEW or something. I'll probably die from like an asthma attack because I do have asthma. <laughs> it's it's a real, it's not a gimmick, guys. Okay, yeah, Kevin, I, I Kevin Owens is a uh, love Kevin Cena for years, dude. And seeing him now, mm-hmm. he was great when he first showed up when he beat Cena, and now it's like he's like one of those toys that they use and they're bored with. Yeah, and he's I stale. He leaves because dude, yep. Yeah, he just, he needs. He's, he's done it all too quick, that man. The thing is. Kevin Steen was always kind of like a fucking loose cannon himself, you know? So um, I'm really hoping that he decides to go his own route because as a wrestling fan, I feel like there's so many amazing stories you can tell in AW. Fuck yeah, dude. I kill Steen, kill. I'm all for it, dude. I oh, was, yeah. I was, I, I hated when he signed with WWE, but I'm one of those guys. I'll be, you know, a hater on a lot of them. I, I'm happy for him as a person. Collect that paycheck, dude. But as this year alone has shown, don't fucking, you know, don't count your fucking chickens because you you could be gone. You can have a monster push like Cross killing it at NXT and then try to be some goofy ass shit that is a rehash of some shit you thought was cool in the 80s and 90s that people don't want anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? Kind of listen, Alan. I mean, listen, yeah. another, one, another one, I think every single person is waiting for the fucking, uh, for the moment as a Whenever Bray Wyatt decides to show up, anyway, oh, yeah, we just I just want to see him on a fucking television screen again. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Totally. And that's the one is you don't know what he's gonna do. That's what's so great about him, but you know what he's got upstairs. So it's like super intriguing that man, this dude can. Let's see what he does now. You know, I heard he's filming a movie at the moment, so he's not jumping into anything well, right away. But you never know. I don't know when they right. rap on that shit. I don't even know what it's called, brother. Right. Right. So- well, either either way, the cuffs are off. So I'm excited to see what he does when he finally does come back now. But yeah, man, I, I mm-hmm. pro wrestling tees. It's I've had a lot of cool experiences. Uh, even from the store opening when we did the very first day that that we opened up the retail shop and we had the entire Bullet Club come out. Um, and they were hanging out all day. We had a fucking food truck outside. Um, that was paid for. Ryan was. So fucking nice to everybody. He paid for towards ha- towards the half of the event. He's like, yeah, I already paid. So everything else is free. So people were just getting free hot dogs and fries. Oh, oh sweet. Feed me some more. Moments like that where you're just like, man, dude, like this is a, a very special place to work. And um, <laughs> um, I'm one of the lucky ones. Um, but yeah, I, my, I mean, on the flip side, the Cryptic Closet is like my baby. You know, um, we, we started off as like a clothing brand. Um, and then kind of spawned off and doing more stuff and then ended up doing a comic book. And then from there decided to do, Hey, let's try to do our own little convention thing called the horror house. And then from there, now we're doing stuff with Joe Bob. So it's just like, my end goal is I hope that one day I can have a storefront, an actual physical storefront because there needs to be some kind of a horror shop in Chicago. Um, you could come to Northwest yeah. Indiana too, brother. I mean, we ain't that far. <laughs> <laughs> we need that shit. Yeah, right Next time Days of the Dead Indianapolis is out there, come on through. I'm I'm always there set up for the whole weekend. So if you guys want to come through, uh, do some interviews, Hell yeah. we'll be there set up. Come hang out, have a couple of beers. You guys just, uh wait, the C2E2, that already happened? No, it's in the It's happening in December. It's in the, 
And, oh, okay, December. Yeah, yeah. Just, I don't know the dates yeah. on it because I've only been to one. So it's like, and it was it just, I'll never go to another one. Not that they're not good, <laughs> but it's just too many people around me, you know, and I'm like, oh, you're too close. So like thinking about C2E2, I think about it from like a vendor's perspective. Um, whenever we would leave and carry our shit to the car, you know, to the car and back to the to the venue, that was the longest fucking walkway, dude. But it's just me complaining. Listen, man, I'm from Chicago. I just can't stand. I can't stand that we get fucking cold ass Halloween, but then four <laughs> days later, it's like beautiful fall day. Yeah, and then it's snowing the next day. I just realized how old I am. I'm over here complaining about the weather, complaining about how cold it is. I'm officially fucking 55 years old, so I apologize, guys. I had a moment. You'll be cool if you start talking about, uh, like, in 10 minutes, if you start talking about all the good soup restaurants around you, then we'll know. There's some good pho. I don't don't know that, but I can tell you where they have the best oatmeal. You guys ready? (laughs) Bring it. The oatmeal that's easiest on your teeth and gums? Scrum sure. Yeah, it, it, it's just liquid. It comes in a fucking cup with a straw <laughs> with the side of a grilled prune. Huh? What? That's good eating. I remember I a handful of years ago, I was, uh, uh, I was working at O'Hare and I used to go to lunch, uh, pretty much every day with two buddies, coworkers. And, uh, that's when I, I was like, I don't feel old. I don't think I look old. And this was like eight years ago. You but old. uh but we would go to lunch to the same fucking spot because they had a sign in displays. They had a sign in the front window, like a regular diner, best soup in town. And <laughs> <laughs> the fucking soup was phenomenal. It was just such good soup. Wait, where is this place? Because I'm I'm intrigued now. It's in displays. Uh I think it's called like Andy's Cafe or I, I think. I actually just went there like a week ago because I was like, I want to see if that soup is still good. Dude, you <laughs> they were had like hunting the soup? No, I know where it was. I just hadn't been there. There, there was no reason Damn. for me to drive out there. And oh, I happened I to be around soup. there. So I was like, let me go check it out. And it's 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 the same shit, and the soup is delicious. Oh man. Soup talk. It's the only soup I know. I've been I think one of the first <laughs> couple weeks I started working for Ryan, I pitched the idea for him to open up a restaurant. Um, kind of a wrestling game restaurant, right? Well, like bring back cool. WWF New York or the Nitro. <laughs> Tell him to get in bed with fucking Tony no, and be like, "Hey, we're bringing it back." Friendly. It was too family friendly. It was it's WWE restaurant. It's like everything's on the kids' meal. No, I'm talking <laughs> about like a GC Dub bar, dude. <laughs> oh, okay, hell yeah, everything has glass in it. Yeah, right? okay. you gotta walk through some glass just to like take a shot. Something like that. Well, here, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you guys this now because if somebody steals my idea, at least this is um this will come out a certain date and it'll you know be out to the public and people will know it's my idea. <laughs> the perfect idea for perfect name for a restaurant for a wrestling themed restaurant is restaurant, but with a W. Yeah, <laughs> the restaurant. It's, it's fucking simple. You see the word, you're like it looks like it has to do with wrestling. Let's run right this and, shit uh, down. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm stealing this. Yeah, right? I'm, I'm uh you forgot that I edit all this, so yeah. I'm deleting <laughs> everything you, want, you just said. <laughs> well, see, no funny. That's thing genius. Is, so my boss is doing this thing. It's like a virtual restaurant type shit, and he's calling it Powerbomb Pizza. He needed cool. he needed items. He needed items for the menu, and I'm one of the punniest, if not the punniest, person at work. <laughs> so um. All these ideas I had for this restaurant, I got to release them to my boss. Um, one of them is Rob Van Dam. That's good soup, and it comes in a cup. Well, it comes in a cup or the whole effing bowl. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I think Kevin Nash. We called the Big Sexies, uh, no, or it was like <laughs> Kevin Kevin Nash's Big Sexy Sausage. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Come out with a pizza called the Brat Lesnar. It's a Brat pizza, and you can call it the Meat Incarnate. <laughs> the Meat Incarnate. Look at this, man. But, <laughs> See? You know, writes itself. Yeah, we, we got to start dude, a restaurant. I was man. saying, um, do a, a milkshake. You could do uh, the Honky Tonk Man's milkshake rattle and roll. <laughs> yes. Damn, dude. I love it. Like, what, what does the milkshake taste like? Like, shit. Because he's, he's, he's an asshole most of the time. Yeah, it's like sweaty tights. Terrible. 
It's like I remember as a kid, I got the Michael Jordan cologne. I was all stoked, and I sprayed. It. I was like, "Man, it this like my rash, and it smelled like sweat." <laughs> the coolest thing I ever got was a fucking Michael Jordan watch from the Michael Jordan restaurant. Before oh shit! Is, oh, I remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. He had a restaurant. That shit's long gone, isn't it? Yeah. Do you remember Disney Quest? Disney Quest. I don't. I don't recall Disney Quest. Right by Michael Jordan's restaurant too. And, oh man, I, we were rocking like yeah. Discovery Zone and fucking Celebration Station, Chuck E. Oh, Cheese. Us too. Us too. But then that's why Disney Quest didn't last because there's too many Hispanic kids that are like, "Yo, I can't afford this Disney shit." Like, yeah. fifteen <laughs> bucks just to fucking yeah. Uh, speak to my demographic. Like, right. Right. I'll just go sit in the fucking heroin filled. Ball pit at Chuck E. Cheese. Perfect. <laughs> no, but damn, I'll they take, got a hell of a slice. Let me tell you. <laughs> I'll take my chance with the balls. I'll go hang out with the robot band. Fuck it. <laughs> right? Don't want the eye missing. <laughs> Speaking of bands, yeah. Vinny, you play music or you were involved in music? What's the deal? Yeah, I play music. I play music. Um, I'm in two bands right now. One's a, a new band that I just started with. We'll be releasing music next year. It's with my original bandmate. Um, it's, it's a band called Something Strange, and then I'm in a group that it's it's like we do it for fun. It's a band called Kowloon Bay. It's like a kind of like alternative pop punk, some shit like Rise Against ish. Um, yeah, I've been playing music for fucking. When I start thinking about how long, I I really feel feel um like 25 years maybe. Yeah, me and Bodie are in the same boat. We've been doing it. Yeah, about. Fucking, I, I know I'm going on 20 years. Bodie's been doing it for a long fucking Almost time. 20. You know, and we're doing that Man, death dude, metal I, I, fucking I tips. So no one likes our music. Right? <laughs> Except for each other. I'm, I'm, dude, sometimes I'm like, I wish I would have just fucking ditched being in a band and just started making wrestling themes. And then... You can still do it, man. AW, you know, like, and then, like, mine would be way, way less original. Like, Cody Rhodes' theme song would be the same thing. Except... <laughs> Reversed, you know, like <laughs> the chorus first, and then this. I feel like the most unoriginal wrestling themes. But like, I, I think about it, I'm like, man, some of these wrestling themes are not that good. I could probably fart out some better than this, but I don't have a studio, or you know, you don't right? fart. I, you, I, don't I, fart I, I, you don't fart enough. Oh, I do. I do, but it's just not microphone. Like, I, don't, I don't have a microphone near my. I could cure cancer with my farts. <laughs> yeah, true story. That's cool. That's how Roman Reigns got better. Okay. Mm. I'm not. Hey, I don't give away my secrets. I read an article a couple of years back. It said like, it's a, flatulence might actually. It does your spouse fart a lot? The flatulence might actually be good to get a whiff of that stuff because it had like some anti-cancer properties to it, like or some bullshit. I was like, what? Weird. It's a legit like, article. You, you can not get cancer by sniffing farts. Yeah, felch those farts, man. You fucking be a new man. Ah. Damn, dude. Awesome. Well, I learned. Name. I appreciate that. I'm going to take this knowledge and go tell my girlfriend. That'll be the first thing I say. <laughs> you yes. More you know, Stratton. Everybody make a rainbow. Nope. <laughs> he refuses to throw that in every time. He did it one time and it caught me by surprise. And I thanked him for it. Now, ever since, maybe I just need to get my own graphic. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like the more you, you know. Yeah, more Don't you know, know but it's like a huge you. load being. <laughs> <laughs> the more you load. <laughs> the more you love, <laughs> no, the more the more you blow. There you go. I like yeah. it. One of my ideas for a band, um, I always thought. Do you guys know the band Flock of Seagulls? Yes, of course. Okay, so I wanted to start a um, a Flock of Seagulls cover band. Um, but I wanted basically every ber- every person in the band would be wearing all black long sleeve shirts and black pants with fake ponytails and we'd be called the flock of seagulls and, um, <laughs> it would be it would be like the aquabats in between every like second or third song there's like a fake fight scene we break oh, yeah. next some <laughs> keto and then play the, or yeah, keto and then play the next song. yes yeah. <laughs> that'd be awesome and then when you gain some traction you could actually get steven seagal to play a set with you guys he would do it. Yeah, but he has to do it in a chair because he can't stand up anymore. Right. Well, <laughs> ten thousand bucks. And it'd have to be a really tall chair because he can't be shorter than anyone. We're all laying down on our backs. <laughs> yep. <laughs> there you go. 
every day, brother, for the man. Sometimes my stomach. Um, Steven Seagal's daughter, I heard, was doing something with WWE or was given a tryout recently. You guys hear about that? I did, actually. <laughs> Dude, I don't know. It's crazy shit like that. Hey, if the Rock's daughter can do it, why can't Seagal's? Her finisher has to be called out for justice. <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> We're under wow. siege. Under siege. Hell yeah. You just want to print those shirts, don't lie. Hey, so we, like, oh, here comes the exit wounds. And I'm like, is that the deep cut with <laughs> Dude, DMX? DMX. <laughs> yes. Yeah. RIP. RIP. I'm like, I'm pretty sure he covered uh Ain't No Sunshine. Is it a rendition of it? I think so. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rick Steiner comes in with the fucking dog barking part. <laughs> Jesus. Dude, the fact oh. that Rick Steiner didn't make appearance at Halloween Havoc is fucking such a missed opportunity. No, oh, man. I, I heard they wanted to do it, again. and they pulled him at the last minute because they don't want to acknowledge yeah. the connection. With they never want to do anything which like is that. lame that's the problem like go that's back to earlier talk stuff, about dude. cross like they want people to do these roles that are like destined to fail and i don't even think you could take a guy like stone cold or dwayne johnson and put them in some of the roles that they're doing to these people now and those are like talents that are worshipped for being able to adjust and work within that system man they i think they constantly set people up for failure man because i do think like hot take real quick Juice for thought, hashtag that. I think maybe oh. Vince is out of touch, and it is mainly all it's all the writers coming up with this shit now. And what they hired that one girl who didn't even know what the fuck wrestling was, or Bobby Lashley, or some shit, you know, like uh, we're not here to spread the I negative think, though. <laughs> no, I think that they're, they're too like don't get me wrong, I get the mentality. But I think that they're so focused on trying to make their own stars that they're like shooting themselves in the own foot. What's crazy is it's not even that hard of a fucking concept. If a wrestler gets to the point where you're starting to get, you know, you get enough buzz and the WD hear, hears about you and they want to, you know, bring you to the performance center and bring you to NXT, you're good, you're good enough of a wrestler and a character to catch their eye. So why the fuck would you change? Like if the fans love. Killer Cross is Killer Cross. Why would you bring him to the roster, strip away his entrance, take Scarlet away from him, put a fucking weird fucking people from, uh, you know, pe- the people under the stairs mask. <laughs> the gimp mask. Yeah, there it is, the gimp mask. And I know he hated it. And it's just like, I don't understand. If you're, if you're running a billion dollar company, how hard is it to just give your wrestlers a little bit of creative freedom? The moment it feels like it's getting off track, Fucking nip, you nip it in the ass. But like until then, there's so many talented guys that can just go, that can go on the mic and it'll feel so much more organic and so much more real. And it doesn't have to be PG-13 or fucking, you don't have to say shit or whatever the fuck. But if you just let them go, it just comes off so much more genuine. And like, I feel like a lot of the adults and people our age wouldn't feel as insulted. And like, like I don't know, sometimes I, I watch and I'm like, dude, they're really expecting people my age to fucking fall for this shit. It's it's really <laughs> bad writing. True. And it's just like it's it's insane how some of this shit gets through. Um and then they 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 like take Rick Steiner and the whole Chucky thing out last minute, but they'll prove stupid shit like I don't know, like a eye eye for an eye match with Rey Mysterio and Seth Rollins. Um, that was so prove, horrible. Or the jar of piss that that Jeff Hardy threw a Sheamus, whatever. Oh like, yeah, things like that. Where I'm like, <laughs> Dude, I don't it, like. It, it's like super bad. People don't forget, you know. Like I'll never forget that shit. It wasn't <laughs> good, but like I remember watching it. I'm like, what the fuck happened to WWE? Like, I don't know. Dude, man, I'll tell I, you I what. That I've come to this conclusion. Not to cut you off, brother, but in in the midst of your conversation with us just now, I've come to this conclusion. Of, and it's finite about WWE. There is no more heart. It's just machine. It's all machine now. That's exactly what happened to WWE. To answer your question, there is the reason why AEW works. Uh, keep that fucking Terminator thing going. Threaten that in the background. I'm gonna ramp, motherfuckers. 
Ran, I got it. Because there is soul. There is a person running that company that lets people be people, that lets you appeal to every demographic out there, and yet at the same time doesn't give a fuck if it doesn't appeal to some. They're just constantly moving forward, and they give a damn. It's not a bit. It's a business. Don't get me wrong. I'm not stupid. I'm not ignorant like you. Smart marks. But what I'm going to tell you is there is soul. There is no soul in the WWE machine anymore. It's all machine. It's like Terminator. They've taken over. They've taken over. It's fucking crazy. Come on. Like, but that's why. I agree. But this is the thing. It, pro wrestling doesn't have to be that at all. Like The thing and the beauty of pro wrestling is that it's so simple. Like this, you just tell the story in the ring. Mm-hmm. Like some of the shit, if you strip away a lot of the the beauty of it, and you give us raw wrestling, like that's what you'll really that's that's when you'll really determine what's good and what isn't. Because I feel like I'm I'm not being biased because I work for wrestling teams. AEW does such a better job at just telling stories than WWE does, and True. stories that are get you engaged. Like, dude, CM Punk and Eddie Kingston sold me on a match in one in one night. Yeah, and they gave you 15 years of history in one, in one night in one yeah. promo. Dude, they let the guys go. They just let them. They, they gave them both a live mic and said, "You know what? Do what you guys fucking do why? Because yep. Eddie Kingston got signed to AEW for being Eddie Kingston. The moment you try to take that away from him, you try to make him somebody else. That's when it's not going to work. For the most part, man, like the long term, the long term storytelling, like Hangman hey, Adam Page and Kenny Omega, that match, perfect example. Something as simple." As the head nod from Matt Jackson, which yes, it was, it was just things like that where I um I love wrestling. Like that moment yeah. where the promo Cody Rhodes uh spit right after the Dusty match on the, at, at the first double or nothing. Mm-hmm. Moments are what wrestling fans want, and it's not it's not that complicated. It's not that hard. It's not over polished. It's not super produced. Like sometimes, just like movies, dude. You kind of like the rawness. You kind of like the, the errors. You like the fuck up because, like, it feels more organic and feels more true. It's easier to become engaged and and kind of like invest in a character when it feels more real and it feels like they're being themselves. When they start becoming these super cartoonish people who they're obviously not, it's harder to become into that character. Yeah, kids are gonna want the fucking action figure. Listen, dude, when I was a young kid, you could have given me an action figure or anything, and I would have fucking played with it. But like, me too. I had those Dollar Tree or whatever cheap ass knockoff wrestlers and GI Joes. Like you'd move one arm and the fucking leg would pop off. You know? yep. <laughs> but I played the fuck right. Out. I I had Bone Code Steve Andrews. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Bone Code, Bone right. Code. Um, and and I don't know, dude. Like I, I look at wrestling now, and it's just like that. That's what I enjoy watching. When the past few years, the past two or three years. There's been more moments that I've enjoyed as a wrestling fan from AEW than WWE. I was at, I was front row for the last dance when when Punk came back, and dude, that was one yes. of the most surreal fucking moments ever. Like that, I've never heard a crowd like that. Never been a part of something like that. It was ongoing the whole time. It was just like a, it was insane, dude. Fucking insane. Um, Surprised everybody's boner didn't move the fucking guardrail. <laughs> it, it was. I was. I was sitting at home, like getting the fucking chills. I'm not a huge CM Punk guy, but had to I know, as dude. I like fucking the arena. Yeah, dude. That's shit. Like that's awesome, especially in Chicago, dude. Yeah, you didn't have to be a fan of him to know that you were watching a special moment in wrestling history. You know, like oh yeah, yeah. That's why it's watch, so cool. Yeah, when you watch WWE's greatest moments, like our top twenty five. Th- there's going to be a couple moments from wrestlers that you're like, I wasn't huge on that guy, but guess what? It's still a part of history. And that night was super epic. And yeah, man, I just, those are the moments that I, I live for, even as an adult. Um, it, it, uh, I know everybody says, oh, wrestling's f- all that shit. Like, my, my oh, you got bleeped. You got bleeped. Joy, you've joined <laughs> the list. I'm going to make a club. You just got bleeped. You'll know when you listen back if you choose. <laughs> People will hear you being bleep for dropping f bombs on this. It's the only word we bleep. Uh, okay, good. I, I like that. I like that. Um, we sometimes yeah. talk about we sometimes talk about uh, the fandom, and when we refer to the fandom, it's 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 almost never the people we meet. Like we've all gone to a ton of wrestling shows. Bodie used to wrestle. Uh, you know, I'm I'm new to the whole wrestling world, even like 
Well, I, I, I started getting back into it like a few months after we started the podcast. My point being, when we complain about the fans uh, not not being appreciative, I guess, of this time, um, it's mostly like the online quotes. And I still believe that it's a really, really, really small percentage. I think most fans realize what wrestling is and and how fun it is. And like you said, how simple it is. Um, but I, th- I think a small percentage like to just bitch about absolutely everything. Oh, yeah. But... They don't seem to like it. Like the I, I don't know. I was going to ask you like, how's the office? How's how's pro wrestling tease as far as like? Because there's still a lot of people probably in your office that that love WWE, um, but it just seems so inauthentic and boring. And like Wallace just said, like it, it is it is kind of robotic. Oh, and machine, machine. I been stretching. And those wrestlers are fucking amazing performers. And if you let them just do their thing, I think didn't, I could be talking totally out of my ass, but didn't Roman Reigns cut a promo a handful of months ago that everybody's like, holy shit, that was amazing. And it was something that I, I don't know who he, who he took a swipe at, or he might've taken a swipe at a handful of people. Where like, like when he's talking about him doing the same thing, it's like missionary over and over again. That, and that was yeah. like letting him go off script for a little bit. And he got in trouble, I guess, in the, in the back office, but he probably got the demo, <laughs> but it was, but it was, uh, but it was awesome. I, I don't watch, whoops. I don't watch WWE, um, but yeah. I, I want them to be good. That's what we all kind of grew up with. Most of us and fell in love with that kind of wrestling, especially like our plus or minus, like, you know, 10 years, our age brackets, dude. It's like this. If fucking Coke stopped tasting really fucking good, I'd like stop now. drinking it. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, but no, that's what I was going to say. You, you're asking how Stop many people off. There aren't. That was like, good. As wrestling fans, I feel like it's our, it's our responsibility to keep up with pay-per-views. And like when, when WrestleMania comes around, obviously we watch it. I'll, 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 I'll look at Raw sometimes when I'm home. I no longer watch Raw on Monday nights. I'll, I'll watch it sometimes Dude. when I'm bored. It's been I, years. I decided, I'm like, you know what? It's not good. I'm not going to sit there. I'm not going to dedicate my time. Um, I'll, I'll, Sometimes if there's something interesting or if it's having to do with Kevin Owens, I'll watch it. Clips on YouTube. You know? That's how I keep up. Yeah, same here, man. And um, yeah, I, I'm the same way. But to wrap this all up, as far as like what we were talking about originally, um, I'll tell you this much. Come 2022, I, if all goes well, I want to do this event again, but do what I was saying and make it a two-day event do one day with Joe Bob doing a double feature and another day with him and Sven Gulli doing a sit down. Cause um, that is, that is a, uh, as a fan, like that, that's just what I want to do. I want to book events that me as a fan would want to see, because I know other people would want to see it. Like right now I can tell you we have less than 32 tickets left for the show before it's completely sold out. Nice. That's awesome. Wow. And, uh, by that's the time, great people hear this it'll probably be sold, sold out so for sure hey yeah. if they're but you know everybody can keep in touch with your friends online i'm sure if people can't go they'll be you know letting people know um dude that's a great idea though what you just said and we actually have uh the manson brothers shout out to those guys uh, have you seen uh there are two guys that used to wrestle in the old windy city pro they just put out a zombie movie dude it's fucking awesome oh it's called um, the Manson Brothers uh, Midnight Zombie Massacre. That's awesome. I'm definitely going to have to check that out. Yeah, dude, it's Perfect. got fucking Boss Rootin' in it. Um, Boss. Who's, who's the big fucking meathead from uh, American Gladiators? Mike? T- Turbo? Turbo, it is Turbo. Yeah, Turbo. Yeah, dude, Mike Hearn. Isn't that his name? Yeah, I think, yeah, I think it is he's Mike Hearn. Fucking it's not Malibu. Big. It's got him in it. Ran, uh, Randy Couture is in it. Uh, it, it, it's pretty good. If you like Evil Dead ass kind of humor, you know. Oh, dude, I'm all about it, man. All about the horror oh, yeah. life, except uh, except if you tell me House, House on Haunted Hill, there's only one, and it's with Vincent Price. Well, you know that's usually the case with a, a lot of these films. I, <laughs> I'm a sucker for the originals. I, I don't think there's been very many remakes to really get it right and do Not it better. Other than the thing, John Carpenter's the thing. That's a fucking great remake, you know, but you got to go back in time. I'm talking about like the new crop of like horror remakes. For me, there's been a l- way more misses than hits, you know? Yeah. I'm waiting for somebody to remake Kazam. <laughs> no, man. Gonna- but with Shaq in it again? Yep. Um, yeah, that would be pretty cool. 
That or um, the guy who's uh, AJ Styles' manager. <laughs> almost. Oh, yeah. man. I almost guarantee you that happens now. Now that you said that, dude, that sounds so. like WWE would do that, you know? All the Zoom. Like, did we really need another <laughs> Space Jam? Uh, no. No one asked for that. <laughs> man, I ain't knocking the original because that shit was the shit. I saw that in the theaters. Well, that's great. I, I, I want to... Uh, as we as we conclude here real quickly, I do want to uh, hype up the Music Box Theater in Chicago. It's an awesome venue to watch a thing like this. I know you said there's there's less than 35 tickets left. Odds are by the time this comes out, it'll be sold out. But that place is great, especially to watch like that like that uh, the second movie in 35 millimeter. Um, and to have Joe Bob on there, there's a stage. It's like one of the older theaters in Chicago. It's just a it's just a really really cool place if you are a film lover. And if you like Joe Bob, it's almost the perfect venue for some shit like that. So that's all I wanted to say. No, you're you're absolutely right, man. And I quit uh, the show. It's, it's uh, all time. It's I know. definitely the one of the most guy. iconic theaters in Chicago, and um, there's so much history behind it. And I mean, my mom remembers when she was young going to the Music Box Theater. And when you go, and I mean, even if if you're from Chicago, you almost kind of know that uh. Joe Bob and Music Box, it almost feels like a, a hand in a glove. You know, like they, they just fit so well. <laughs> and a greasy ass glove, like the greasy strangler. Hey man, I'm super excited. If anybody is interested, if there is a ch- chance that there are tickets, um, feel free to go to musicboxtheater.com. Go to their site, go to the section um, on December 16th where you see Joe Bob. You can buy tickets if there's none there. You can maybe call if there's any at the box office, but um, if all goes well, it'll be completely sold out. And hopefully sometime down the line in 2022, we can talk again when I have better news and have him and Svenguli on for the same event. Yeah, for sure, brother. Hey, and real quick, also let everybody know where they can find uh, the Cryptic Closet at on social media. Oh, yeah. Um, on Instagram, we're just at the Cryptic Closet. Um TheCrypticCloset.com is the main uh, website to go and grab any of the upcoming releases, including the faculty t-shirt. Um, at Cryptic Closet on Twitter. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. But we're usually doing a lot of horror movie conventions. So if you, uh, if any of you guys are familiar with like uh, Astronomicon or Days of the Dead or um, Horror Hound, um, some of those conventions book a lot of wrestlers and stuff. Um, we're usually set up at those shows. So, um, yeah, or you can poke me on Facebook. It, fuck yeah, everybody needs to do that because we're all about the horror. We're all about the pro wrestling with the juice pro wrestling. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Share with all your friends. If you're listening right now in podcast land, fucking download, share, and leave a rating and review because it's the right thing to do. Hit us up, ProWrestlingTees.com, JP Dub Tees. That's where you can score three killer designs from Pro Wrestling Tees of your favorite homies and wrestling podcasting and all that shit. And the heavy metal world, of course. Thank you guys once again. Vinny, until next time, we got to wet them up, wet them up, wet them up. <laughs>